Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now this morning we're back in Golders Green because we've come to see the final resting place of someone that I've been asked for so many times and I've been to his crash site and that is of course the legend that is Mark Bolan. Now on the other video of the crash site I gave you all the information about Mark and about his past. I will give you some gentle information here so I'm not going to go into too much detail as much as I did back then um, you're more than welcome to I'm just going to be careful and mindful that my necklace is going to start hitting my microphone right okay um, so yeah I will put some on here but feel free to go back and watch the, the one with the crash site because it's, it's very informative and also it's it's sad really because you get to see where he you know where he passed away ultimately um but what we're going to do today is we're going to come and find where his ashes have been sprinkled if you like um in this beautiful place it's the first time i've been here um and it's such a beautiful place it's so big uh you could get lost easily in here just walking around looking at different plaques and stuff but but it's great um it's quite quiet at the moment it's quite nice and chilled so don't forget if you liked the video today please give it a thumbs up usual stuff subscribe blah 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 blah, blah. and uh We'll carry on. I'll tell you a little bit more about Mark and uh, we'll have a look for his um, memorial plaque and the bench that's been left here for him. Mark Bolan, born Mark Field, 30th of September 1947 to the 16th of September 1977. Was an English musician, singer and songwriter. He was one of the pioneers of the glam rock movement in the early 70s with his band T-Rex. In 1964, Bolan met his first manager, Geoffrey Delaroy Hall, and recorded a slick commercial track backed by session musicians called All At Once, a song very much in the style of his youthful hero, Cliff Richard, which was later re released posthumously by Danielle's and Karen Willens in 2008 as a very limited edition 7-inch vinyl. After the original tape recording was passed on to them by Delaroy Hall, this track is one of Boland's first professional recordings. Bolan began his first serious romantic relationship with Teresa Whitman in 1965. The song Hot Love was written about her. They broke up in 1968 when Bolan met June Ellen Child. The pair immediately fell in love and moved into a flat together after only knowing each other for a few days. They married on the 30th of January 1970. She was a former secretary to his then managers Black Hill Enterprises, also the managers of another of his heroes, Sid Barrett whom June dated. She was also influential in raising her new husband's profile in the music industry. Boland's relationship with June was to He engaged in several affairs over the course of their marriage, including one with singer Marsha Hunt in 1969, and another with artist Barbara Nessin, while recording in America in 1971. The couple separated in 1973 after June found out about Boland's affair with his back and singer Gloria Jones. After Bolan's death, June revealed that she had undergone multiple abortions during their marriage because she believed Bolan was not yet mature enough to father at the time. In 1971, the band's record label, Fly, released the electric warrior track, Jeepster, without Bolan's permission. Outraged, Bolan took advantage of the timely lapsing of Fly Records contract and left for EMI, who gave him his own record label, the T-Rex Wax Co. Its bag and label features an iconic head and shoulders image of Bolan. Despite the lack of Bolan's endorsement, Jeepster peaked at number two in the UK. In 1972, he reached two more UK number ones with Telegram San and Metal Guru, taken from the slider and two number twos in Children of the Revolution and Solid Gold Easy Action. In the same year, he appeared in Born to Boogie, a documentary by Ringo Starr about T-Rex, including a concert filmed at London's Wem Wembley Empire in March 1972. Mixed in were surreal scenes shot at John Lennon's mansion in Ascot and a session with T-Rex joined by Ringo Starr on a second drum kit and Alton John on piano. At this time T-Rex record sales accounted for about 6% of total British domestic record sales. The band was reportedly selling 100,000 records a day. However, no T-Rex single ever became a million seller in the UK, despite many gold discs and an average of four weeks at the top per number one hit. No T-Rex record was certified until 1985, as the record company has to pay for it, which Bolands did not in the 1970s. 
Bolan took to wearing top hats and feather boas on stage as well as putting drops of glitter on his cheekbones. Stories are conflicting about his inspiration for this. Some say it was introduced by his personal assistant, Shilita Secunda. Although Bolan told John Pigeon in a 1974 interview on Radio 1 that he noticed the glitter on his wife June Child's dressing table prior to a photo session and casually daubed some of it on his face there and then. Other performers and their fans soon took up variations of this idea. The glam era also saw the rise of Boland's friend David Bowie, whom Boland had come to know in the underground days. Boland had played guitar on Bowie's 1970 single, Prettiest Star. Boland and Bowie shared the same manager, Les Conn, and producer, Tony Visconti. But their friendship was also a rivalry which continued throughout his career. Bowie's 1972 song, All the Young Do's, name-checked T-Rex. Bowie's song, Lady Stardust, is generally interpreted as alluding to fellow glam rock icon Mark Bolan. The original demo version was entitled He Was Alright, a song for Mark. Mark Bolan died aged 29 from injuries sustained when his purple mini, driven by his girlfriend Gloria Jones, crashed. Jones lost control of the car and it struck a steel reinforced chain link fence post and came to rest against a sycamore tree after failing to negotiate a small humpback bridge near Gypsy Lane on Queen's Ride Barnes, South West London. From the day of the accident, the site became a place for pilgrimage to Bolan fans and this was reported in various newspapers from 1978 onwards. Coincidentally, the registration number of the car was Fox 661L and within the lyrics of his single Sold, Solid Gold Easy Action are the lines easy as picking foxes from a tree, and woman from the east with her headlights shining. In September 1997, the Performing Rights Society, PRS, installed a memorial stone for Bolin facing into Gypsy Lane, at the base of the embankment from the Bolin tree, located in Queen's Ride. In 1999, the T-Rex Action Group, TAG, was formed with the specific aim of caring for the site, TAG were granted an in perpetuary lease on the site with ownership and full responsibility for the Bolan tree. So there's some information there about Mark Bolan and such a tragedy, such a young, talented man, um, just taken way too soon. You think of the likes of what Bowie did and people that were in that glam rock era and you think of the potential that Mark Bolan could have had. Anyway, I think I found it. You can't miss it. I found it. swan up the top t-rex there look sitting here we still care for you mark bolan 1947 to 1977 that is absolutely gorgeous mark foul born to boogie september the 30th 1947 Mark Bolan, always in our hearts, September the 16th, 1977. Wow, that's amazing, it's gorgeous. So here's the memorial bench to um, Mark Bolan, and you know, what an amazing guy he was, what an amaz amazing musician, great voice, so talented, had the looks, had everything, didn't he? And uh, you know, this is a real privilege to sit on this bench here. And if we look over there, we um, can see his 
name plaque in the rose bush. So we're going to have a look at that now. Here we go. Simeon and Phyllis Field, 19th September 1991 and 11th of January 1991. Now together with their beloved son Mark, 16th September 1977. Lovingly remembered, always rest in peace. Thank you, Mark. Bless you. So that's where the ashes of Mark Bolan are with his parents. Bless you, Mark. Thank you so much for everything you contributed towards the music industry. Um, and it's just a shame that we didn't have him for a lot longer, really, isn't it? But it's always the way, isn't it? All these talented people, um, one way or another, or somehow, they just all disappear off the earth as quick as they come in. But wow, Mark Bolan. Quite sad, really, isn't it? It's, um, I don't usually get emotional when I'm doing this, but this is quite a sad one, really. I just, I, I don't know why, I, you know, I'm, I, I like his music and stuff. I'm not, I wasn't, obviously I, I was born after, I was aware of what his music was about, really. Um, but you know, I think it's the, the fact that it's, again, another young life, um, gone. And we, none of us just never know what's around the corner, ever 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 so we have to live life to the full um, and I know I've said this on many occasions walking around these sort of places really does humble you and it really does make you grateful um, for every day that you wake up and you breathe and you smell that fresh air and you realize that life's for living now life does throw curveballs at all of us okay um, you know, you have bad days. You watching right now? I know you do. I have bad days, okay? But it's how we deal with that bad day. That's the important part. It's what, do you let that bad day define you? Or do you find define that bad day and turn it around and make it into something positive? Because I think that's where the key is. It starts up here. It always starts with yourself. Like I've always said before, don't let any outside influences tell you what to do or how to live your life. You live your life the best way it suits you at that moment in time and on that day. And that's really important, okay? Um, you know, like I say, being in these sort of places all the time, it humbles you and it makes you uh, thankful, really, for everything that um, you have or don't have in life. And I don't, I don't mean materialistic things. That's rubbish. You can't take that, that crap with you. That's just irrelevant. It's the people that are around you, the people that you can talk to, the people that care for you. Um, and if you're on your own, then, you know, you, you have a chance of going out to meet new friends, new people, um, join social clubs, take up some sort of sport. And if you're physically not able to do that, then, you know, find a local cafe or something like that and go and have some coffee and tea. And you'll meet lots of people and you'll get talking to people and you'll find that it's not all doom and gloom. And there's quite a few people in the same boat and you'll meet them and you'll get chatting to them and you'll make new friends. And that's what everything is all about. It's just looking after yourself, your well-being, before we all end up in either somewhere like here or in one of the many cemeteries that I go to visit. Um, because we will one day, no getting away from it, we will all end up in one of these places or a cemetery, um, whatever you, isn't that relaxing? Whatever floats your boat or floats your pond. Anyway, that's enough of the old serious stuff and the doom and gloom. But uh, the point I was making is just don't ever suffer alone. Just um, find people and talk to them. Anyway, and uh, as we come out here, look at this Mark Bowler one. That was beautiful. Look. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in on that. Loving memory of Mark Bowler, 30th of 1947 to 16th of night, 77. There's a leaf on the, <laughs> whatever it is, five years, on his light of love still shines brightly. 
placed by the official Mark Bowden fan club and fellow fans to commemorate 25th anniversary. Oh, yeah, yeah, 25 years in September 2002. Wow, that's 21 years old now. And do you know what? The uh, Mark Bowden fan club got in contact with me. I'm sure it was in um, when I did a visit to the crash site, and they were very, uh, very nice to me. Very, very, um, just very complimentary. And up here, of course, we've got another bit of memory of Mark Bowden for Mark Field, 30th of September 1947 to 16th of September 1977. Musician, writer, and poet. Much love and misplaced fans. That's beautiful. I love the fact they've done that. Um, that's lovely that the fans have done that, isn't it? It's, it's great. I think it's a real, um, real tribute to such a, an amazing man. And when you stand here, you look around at all these names, you're like, wow. Anyway, that's it for today from Golders Green Crematorium. Mark Bolan, what a guy. Just keep on uh, pumping out the rock music. Keep playing some T-Rex. I'll see you all on the next one. Take it easy.